so nice to uh, be given this opportunity to stand here this morning uh, to preach a sermon for today. It has been a long time since I stand here. Uh, it has an interesting feeling, the butterfly feeling. <laughs> if you have your Bible, please turn to the book of Mark. The book of Mark chapter 1. Actually, I have prepared this message for quite some time. Pastor has been asking the staff, uh, just get ready to be a uh, standby, taking over, just in case, you know, preacher, pastor uh, are feeling unwell, so we have to uh, step up. So I have been thinking about this message for a long time. Uh, yeah, I actually did a, a bridge version with the young adult during one of our meetings, and I hope they remember and today I'm going to repeat again so that they can, they can uh, remember even deeper. Okay. Uh, the lesson I have today is taken from Mark, uh, almost the entire chapter of Mark. The lesson title is Focus, Focus, and Focus. Uh, may I request the congregation to stand? We're going to read Mark chapter 1, verse 1 together. Just one verse to help us to focus on today's lesson. Mark chapter 1 verse 1, when you are ready, let's begin. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Uh, let's do it one more time. One, two, three, let's begin. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for this Sunday morning that you can allow us to have this place to get together the comfort, the freedom, Lord, that we can open up your Bible uh, to examine and to learn of you. Lord, we pray that this morning you allow us to just focus back unto you, still our hearts, allow us to listen to that still, small voice. Lord, we commit this time back unto your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Please be seated. I thought I talked a little bit. Oh, before I start, I want to thank the choir. The Filipino choir is amazing. Uh, I certainly hope that they can do more of this singing, but I know that they have put in a lot of hard work uh, to prepare for just this singing alone. So I really appreciate the, the hard work and the love for the people. And the message of the song is very beautiful, reminded us of the Lord Jesus Christ again. Coming back to, to this lesson, I thought I'd do a small introduction of myself since I have not been here for a long time. I've been here for a long time. Uh, yeah, I'm Brother Chris, uh, serving in the church full-time, looking after the youth, young adult, and uh, now with the senior ministry. And uh, I, I retired from the Navy. After that, I joined this uh, uh, church office full time And in the blink of an eye, it's already almost seven years. Yeah, thank God for the opportunities that have been here. And uh, before I joined the church, uh, I was a full-time uh, naval officer. I, I seldom talk about this, but, but there's an occasion for me to talk about this. Uh, uh, I, I teach in the officer cadet school. So I, I have this experience, I have this upbringing about being on time and, uh, and being ready for, for lessons. Uh, if, if the class starts at 11 a.m., my cadets will be in the class before 11. Because they know that if you come in 11, you're already late. Because my class can't start at 11. So I have this culture in me that I'm always uh, very sensitive to time. In fact, my very first encounter with one of the senior commander uh, when I was posted to the MCV squadron. Uh, 20 years ago, that is the most advanced squadron in the Navy. You know, they, have, uh, they have the most advanced war, war fighting system. And as a young officer, when I was posted there, uh, we are called to the conference room. We have a squadron commander. He wants to meet all the young officers. You know young officers, they think that they know a lot. Newly promoted, went for course, they come back, they want to do a lot for the Navy. Then the senior commander wants to settle us down. He first meeting, he's gathered us in the conference room. Again, he meet us, let's say 10 a.m. But before 10 a.m., about the 20 of us are already in the conference room. You know, all with our uniform ready, pressed, trying to impress the senior commander. And he's a full colonel in the squadron. Uh, he's known for no nonsense. 
And he, he, he walk in at exactly on time, you know, 10, 10 a.m. he walk in. And all of us were seated, getting ready for a, a, a lecture or a sermon uh, or, or teaching. But he came in, he only said three things. He said, today my preaching is about focus, focus, and focus. He said, if you don't focus, I'm going to help you to focus. You know that statement stay with me for such a long time. If you don't focus, I'm going to make you very focused. It's a scary statement when I hear that from someone, you know, uh, from a full kerner who, who say that. And I must say that during his tour as a commanding officer for the squadron, uh, the squadron did well in many aspects, administration, exercises, overseas deployment and all these things. And, and I want to say that it is his ability as a commander to help the people to stay focused. Whenever he stepped on board the ship, even my youngest, most junior soldier will pay attention. Squadron commander is on board, let's stay focused. So uh, I, I want to say that because the ability to stay focused helped the squadron to do really well under his uh, leadership. And I've learned this as a young officer, the ability to stay focused is very, very important for you to be successful in life. I'm not sure you have already realized if you are able to stay focused, a lot of tasks can be finished in a very short time. For example, a 30 minutes task, uh, you, if, you are, you are, if you are able to stay focused in 30 minutes, you can finish it. But if you are unable to, you know, after three hours, you are still doing it. So I hope that this lesson help us to stay focused. Stay focused. Verse 1, Mark chapter 1, verse 1. It says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. In fact, I like Mark's writing style so much because he is very direct and focused. In verse number 1, chapter 1, he already tells us what he wants the reader to pay attention. He wants the reader to pay attention to the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you are reading the book of Mark, you should pay attention that it is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about the Son of God. It is about the Gospel. That's exactly what Mark wants us to focus. And when I look at this first verse, not only that I, I'm aware that Mark is very focused, I also see this as an invitation. An invitation to everyone who reads the book. It is about the Lord Jesus Christ. It is about the Son of God. And, and, and I really hope that even this one verse this morning, if you can remember, it will challenge you to, to want to know more about the gospel, to want to know more about Jesus Christ. Just this one verse alone uh, help us to focus. And after this verse, the next two verses, Mark trying to introduce someone very important. Whenever the Bible wants to introduce somebody very important, you know, they like to point you back to the Old Testament. Verse 2, it says, As it is written in the prophets, Behold, I send my messenger before thy face, which shall prepare thy way before thee. Verse 3, The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord, make his path straight. And we know that he is pointing us back to the Old Testament written about this person called the forerunner. He is, he is the forerunner before the Lord Jesus Christ. And if you may just quickly turn to Isaiah chapter 40. Isaiah chapter 40, verse number 3. Prophet Isaiah have already mentioned about this man. Chapter 40, verse 3. The Bible reads, The voice of him that crieth in the wilderness, Prepare ye the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. It was mentioned in the Old Testament that there's this man coming before the Lord Jesus Christ. It is important because he's going to lead, he's going to point the Jew to the Messiah. He's going to point the Jew to the Messiah. Verse 4 to verse 9, verse 4 to verse 9, uh, basically talks about this person, 
that mentioned in Isaiah chapter 40, verse 3. Verse 4, it says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem, and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sins. And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of a skin about his loin, and he did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, There cometh one mightier than I after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down and unloose. I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. And it shall come to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized of John in Jordan. These short eight verses more or less sum up, more or less sum up the ministry of John. John the Baptist, as we know, is a heavyweight person you know, in the Bible. He's the forerunner. And Mark used eight verses to introduce him. And the purpose of Mark introducing John the Baptist is again is to point us to who? Point us back to verse 1, you know, the beginning of the gospel, Jesus Christ, the Son of God. If you pay attention to these eight verses, or those Mark is trying to introduce this person called John the Baptist. But John the Baptist is pointing everyone to the Lord Jesus Christ. I read to you again. Verse 4, it says, John did baptize in the wilderness and preached the baptism of repentance for the remission of sins. And there went out unto him all the land of Judea and they of Jerusalem and were all baptized of him in the river of Jordan, confessing their sin. John is already there doing the baptizing of people, asking them to confess for their sins. And it says, verse 6, And John was clothed with camel's hair and with a girdle of skin about his loin, and did eat locusts and wild honey, and preached, saying, he's pointing the people to the Lord Jesus Christ. He said, There come one mightier than I after me, the latches of whose shoes I am not worthy to stoop down. And, unloose. and in verse 8, he said, I indeed have baptized you with water, but he shall baptize you with the Holy Ghost. If we just stop here, uh, we can see the Mark, the author of this book, trying to direct the people, just focusing on the Lord Jesus Christ, focusing on the gospel. And when he introduced John the Baptist, it was the same idea. The entire ministry of John the Baptist is to point people to the gospel of Jesus Christ, the, the Son of God. Oh, yeah, I just want to let you realize that it is important to focus because uh, John trying to help all of us to focus. And even as I'm, you know, we are all seated here and we are, we are talking about the, the gospel, uh, are, you, are you distracted in any way? You know, in life we are always uh, distracted. I'm not sure whether your handphone is already sending you messages that remind you to read something. You know, or, or someone eating some sweets, uh, distracting you, someone coming late, distracting you. you know, the world has many ways to distract us, and uh, if you are not able to focus, uh, your attention will be drawn away. Now, again, like a sailor, like a sailor out at sea, uh, we are very aware of being, being on course, on track, knowing where we are heading to. Uh, once we are distracted, you know, we will veer away from our main course, and then we are going into danger. In fact, I say again, in life, if you are able to stay focused, uh, it helps you a lot. Uh, the things that distract us are things that are drawing us away from what we are supposed to pay attention to. Okay, the Bible say, point us to focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. But the world is telling you, focus on me, you know, focus on my career, uh, focus on my schoolwork, or focus on you know, everything that that going to make me successful. You know, don't stand. Don't let anything stand between you and your I don't know your your, your success. Oh, but the but the but the message that I have is that uh, don't let anything stand between you and God. In fact, this entire book, from chapter one to the last chapter, is pointing every one of us back to 
the Lord Jesus Christ. Yeah, yeah, so, so uh, yeah, just, just have to learn how to put aside all the distractions. And this morning I have a lesson with the youth talking about how the handphone being a distraction. By sitting there, listen to the young people sharing, you know, they have many ways, they know what is the correct thing to do to put away the distraction and allow them to stay focused. So, yeah, the, the challenge here is that uh, stay focused with me, eh? yeah, put away the handphone, put away whatever thing that's going to distract you. Okay, let's, let's come back. Uh, verse 10 and verse 11. The Bible says, And straightway, coming out of the water, he saw heavens open, and the Spirit like a dove descending upon him. And, they, and there came a voice from heaven saying, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Again, if you look at these two verses, The, the, the Bible, by these two verses, is telling us that you know, heaven opened and declared that the Lord Jesus Christ is the Son of God. He said, Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Uh, there's so much in this chapter alone that helped the reader to draw your attention on the Lord Jesus Christ. If this verse cannot bring you to focus, I don't know what can. You know. Heaven opened and said that Thou art my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. Well, in fact, the most important thing in life is really to pay attention to this person called Jesus Christ. Uh, I remember when I have my first, my only son, uh, Zane. The thing that comes to my mind, the most important thing in my mind is that he must, he must know who is the Lord Jesus Christ. You know, this, this is the most important thing I think as a father you can pass down to your son. Uh, I, I'm, I'm very focused, I know that this is, a, this is a, the most important thing. The rest of the thing, secondary. Or if you understand the gospel, you will want to do that uh, to the people that you love. Uh, the, the best gift that you can give someone is the gospel. Or let's, let's pay attention to the gospel. And the next two verses, 12, 13. And immediately the spirit driven, drive the, him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him I read again and immediately the spirit drive him into the wilderness and he was there in the wilderness 40 days tempted of Satan and was with the wild beasts and the angels ministered unto him you know we are just at the we are not even halfway through chapter 1 and these two verses sort of sum up, sum up, consolidated the 40 days and 40 nights the, the devil trying to tempt Jesus. I just hope, I want to show you that, you know, in two verses, Mark put everything together. If you go to the book of Matthew and you go to the book of Luke, they use easily more than 10 verses to describe about the encounter between Jesus and the devil. But Mark only uses two verses. And verse 14 onwards, he's going to start talk about Jesus' earthly ministry. Uh, again, I'm trying to tell you how Mark is being very direct and focused. He wants us to go to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. What was the Lord Jesus Christ's focus? Uh, allow me to, to, to do this. Uh, if you turn to Matthew chapter 4. Matthew chapter 4. The last verse of chapter 3, it says, And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. And in chapter 4, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness to be tempted of the devils. And it go all the way until verse, I think, 11. Yeah, until verse 11. Matthew reached the 40 days uh, temptation of Jesus at the start of chapter 4. You know, he has have spent a lot of time to talk about a lot of things and then finally in chapter 4, he reached this point. And he spent 11 verses to talk about this. 
Let's go to the book of Luke, chapter 4. Book of Luke, chapter 4. Again in chapter 4, verse 1, the Bible says, And Jesus, being full of the Holy Ghost, returned from Jordan and was led by the Spirit into the wilderness, being forty days tempted of the devil. And in those days he did eat nothing. And when they were ended, he afterward hunger. Verse 3, And the devil said unto him, If thou be the Son of God, command this stone that it may it be turned, it be made bread. Come back to the book of Mark, chapter 1. Yeah, I'm just trying to, to demonstrate to you how Mark, uh, being very precise and focused, wants us to don't pay attention to the 40 days. Uh, it's important, but that's not what I want you to pay attention to. I want you to pay attention to the ministry of the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, just in 13... Just in 13 verses, he already concluded the ministry of John the Baptist. Talk about the 40 days of the, uh, uh, the encounter between Jesus and the, the, the devil. And all he wants us to do now is come to verse 14. And let's stay focused. What is the most important things or what is the top uh, urgency of top priorities, the thing that Jesus did when he was... He was uh, doing his earthly uh, ministry. Uh, what do you think was the first thing that he did? Well, the answer is in uh, the next verse. 14, verse 14, he said, Now after that John was put in prison, Jesus came into Galilee, preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. The first thing that Jesus did, recorded in the book of Mark, you know, he tried to direct all to the Son of God, the beginning of the gospel, and in verse 14, he said, the first thing that Jesus did was what? Preaching the gospel of the kingdom of God. That is the number one priority in his mind that he wants to do is to preach the gospel. Preach the gospel. Verse 15, this is the first, if your Bible has a red lettering, you know, it's recording the word of Christ. This is the first time in the book of Mark, he recorded that Jesus first uttered this word. According to the, the book of Mark. Eh? Verse 15, And saying, The time is fulfilled, and the kingdom of God is at hand. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Repent ye, and believe the gospel. Uh, uh, yeah, this is the first thing that Jesus uh, you know, said, according to the book of Mark. Eh? Yeah. You know these two verses, if you understand these two verses, it can solve a lot of your life problem. Just to know who is the Lord Jesus Christ. Just to believe in Him. And a lot, a lot of your, your life, uh, your, your worries, your problems will be taken away. But unfortunately, a lot of people doesn't know. But nonetheless, I want you to see that the first thing that Jesus did is, is to talk about the gospel of the kingdom. And in verse 15, He said, Repent ye and believe in the gospel. Believe the gospel. Today, I'm not sure any of you here, uh, you know, you have been attending church, but you have not accepted the Lord as a personal saviour. Uh, as we come to verse 15, I want to let you know that Jesus loved you. His entire life, you know, the beginning of the gospel, when he's starting his gospel, he was to tell you that, you know, repent and believe. And, and in fact, this is such an important uh, message that I think the church should embrace, uh, everyone should be talking about the gospel because this is what Jesus came uh, to do. And I'm thankful that in this church, you know, we emphasize a lot of tracting, winning of souls. You know? So this is the thing that we need to do. I'm feeling thirsty. <laughs> Thirsty, nervous, huh? maybe they are connected. So I'm saying that our church is a church that uh, emphasizes on uh, soul winning. In fact, pastor just completed his uh, 
track and he's asking us to challenging the church to start uh, standing up to your friend. The need to reach to the lost. And I, I know many of us are very uncomfortable uh, when going out to share the gospel. You know, your brother Chris, it's really difficult to, to talk to someone about uh, the gospel. And I do not know how to, how to share the gospel. But in my own, in my own life, you know, I witness how people share the gospel just using John 3.16. Just explain John 3.16, you know, the gospel is inside John 3.16. Let's turn to John 3.16. John 3.16 is the gospel message. It says, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. For God so loved the world. How? How did God so love the world? That He gave His only begotten Son. No, He gave His only begotten Son. And the Bible says, and we know that He came to die on the cross you know, to take away our sin. And the Bible says, whosoever, in John 3, 16, whosoever believeth in Him should not perish. All you need to do is to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. And they say, should not perish but have everlasting life. I'm trying to demonstrate to you that uh, sharing the gospel is not a difficult thing. In fact, if you remember the sower, the parable of the sower, it talks about the, the sower go and, you know, just, you just go and sow the seed. It doesn't require skill. You know, you don't need any skill. You just take the seed and you just. The Chinese say sa chong, you know, it's just sa and sa. Whether the seed takes roots is not under the control of the sower, or it's, it's God's domain. So our duty uh, as a church is just to go out and sow seeds. Not too difficult. Just talk about John 3.16. You know, you can be a sower also. So 14 and 15, uh, the first thing that Jesus did was to preach the gospel, preach the gospel of the kingdom of God. Verse 15, and he said, the time is fulfilled, the time is now, the time is up, the time is now, and the kingdom of God is at hand. All you need to do is to repent, recognize your own sin, recognize your own need for the Savior, and believe the gospel. That's it. You know, that's it. A simple message. And what's the second thing that the Lord Jesus Christ did? What, what do you think was the second thing in his, his priority list? Huh? It's in the next few verses. Verse 16. Now as he walked by the Sea of Galilee, he saw Simon and Andrew, his brother, casting a net into the sea, for they were fishers. And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. And straightway they forsook their nets, and followed him. Verse 19. And when he had gone a little further, then he saw James, the son of Zebedee, and John his brother, who also were in the ship mending their net. And straightway he caught them, and they left their father Zebedee in the ship with the hired servants and went after him. From the book of Mark, the next thing that Jesus did was to make disciples. Fishers of men, you know, to make disciples. So he preached the gospel and he made disciples. Uh, yeah, if I were to prioritize, preach the gospel, make disciples, is what Jesus was doing. And if you are looking for a church, you know, he asks you, he asks, what is a good church? The church must be doing this. Preach the gospel, make disciples. That's the, that's the whole uh, function of a church, right? To, to, to make disciples. So the flow is actually quite straightforward uh, for us to, to stay focused as a, as a believer, as a follower of uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. Uh, this should be our priorities. The gospel make disciples. Gospel make disciples. Let's look down. Huh? Yeah. Verse 21. And they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day, he entered into the synagogue 
and taught. I'm really, really thankful when I saw the word taught. Jesus, after he preached, he made disciples and then he taught. You see, you see the, the, the link? Again, I want to say that this, is, this must be the priority of the church. Preach the gospel, make disciples, and teach them. Teach them. The next verse, the word taught was used again in verse 22. And they were astonished at his doctrine, for he taught them as one that had authority and not as the scribes. You know, when Jesus was teaching them, he, he teached them with full authority because he is God himself. He's teaching his word. And I was saying that I was so thankful to see the word taught because taught and preach are two different things. He started preaching. He made disciples and he taught them. And, and, I, and the, the word taught repeated two times in verse 21 once and in verse 22 he said taught. And he emphasized that when he taught them, he was with such authority that the people were astonished, amazed by his, his doctrine. Uh, this, book, this book has full of uh, a teaching you know, that can challenge the world. In fact, the first verse of the first book, Genesis 1.1. Let's turn to Genesis 1.1. Oh. The Bible says, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This verse alone challenged our entire education system. You know, we are taking teaching of evolution. But this verse says, you know, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. This book is full of authority because it is the word of God. And, and we should spend time we should be, be spending time reading the, the, word, the Word of God. So we talk about three things. Preach, make disciple, taught. Uh, I, I just briefly say that as a church, if you want to look for a good church, the church must be doing this. Doing this huh? I'm, I'm thankful that Shalom has been doing this, you know, reaching out, making disciples, and teaching the people. But the question I have for every one of us, including myself, uh, what is your attitude the word being taught. You know, do you have the desire to be taught? You know, the, the, the church has many, uh, many programs. We have Sunday schools. We have uh, PI, Wednesday night. Pastor Tan has two night classes on Tuesday through the Bible program. It will teach you from Genesis to Revelation. And now he started another Thursday night just talking about the Pentateuch. You know, we have programs to teach the people you know, to grow, to grow. And, and, and the, the question I really have, every one of us, you know, what is our attitude toward being taught? That was Jesus Christ's mission. That was the Lord Jesus' mission. Preach, make disciples, taught them. You know, so we see many empty seats on Sundays, you know, Sunday school. Uh, what is the priorities? A little bit more sleep? I don't know, you know. Sports? What, what is distracting you from being very focused? Focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. Focus on the gospel. Uh, that, that should be the emphasis. Uh, I'm, I'm saying this because the Bible says this. I'm saying this because the Lord Jesus Christ was demonstrating this was what he did let's continue uh, verse 23 and there was in their synagogue a man with an unclean spirit and he cried out saying let us alone what have we to do with thee thou jesus of nazareth art thou come to destroy us i know thee who art thou the holy one of god and Jesus rebuked him, saying, Hold thy peace and come out of him. Now this short encounter basically shows us that Jesus has the power to cast out demons. Uh, in the start of his ministry, he already demonstrated that he is, he is God himself. Even, even the, the demons able to say, 
I know thee who art thou, the Holy One of God. The Holy One of God. If you look at this verse, it's pointing us again to the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy One of God. Verse 26. And when the unclean spirit had torn him and cried with a loud voice, he came out of him. And they were all amazed in so much that they questioned among themselves, saying, What things is this? What new doctrine is this? With, for with authority commanded he even the unclean spirit, and they do obey him. Verse 28. And immediately his fame spread abroad throughout all the region round about Galilee. So this event, this, this, this teaching in the synagogue, this casting of a demon, demon uh, in the synagogue has made him very famous. Already, you know, just, just one entering, one encounter, you already make him uh, very famous. People already know about this man. This man come and preach the gospel. Or this man teach differently. This man has the power to cast out demon. And in verse 29, And forthwith, when they will come out of the synagogue, they enter into the hour of the house of Simon and Andrew with James and John. But Simon's, mother's, uh, Simon's wife's mother lay sick of a fever, and anon they tell him of her. And he came and took her by the hand and lifted her up, and immediately the fever left her, and she ministered unto them. Until verse 31, so we see the Lord Jesus Christ not only has you know, the teaching authority, the casting out of the demons, he has the healing ability. He has a healing ability. So if you meet the Lord Jesus Christ, you know, you know that he is someone that can solve all your problems. Whatever problem you have, you come to him. You know, he has the mean, he has the power, he has the authority to solve all the problems. And when we reach verse 32, verse 32, and at even, when the sun did set, they brought unto him all they were diseased and them that were possessed with devils. And all the city were gathered together at the door. And he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devil to speak because they knew him. When we reach verse 34, I want to tell you that it was the same day that Jesus entered into the synagogue. And then uh, all the way he went to uh, Peter's house. And at night, at night the, the, the people came and uh, he, he sort of meet all their needs. Right? He meets all their needs. He said he healed many that were sick of diverse diseases and cast out many devils and suffered not the devils to speak because they knew him. Uh, I'm not sure you saw that picture that it was a day event uh, when he went into the synagogue until he go to... Uh, Simon's house. It was the same day event. Or in fact, Mark trying to make that very clear. If I, if, I, if I may just show you in verse 21, in verse 21 he say, and they went into Capernaum and straightway on the Sabbath day he entered into the synagogue. He entered into the synagogue. And then we come to verse 29. And for with, you know, it's like immediately the event after, immediately, uh, when they were come out of the synagogue, they entered into the house of Simon and Andrew and James and John. It was the same, you know, it was the same day he came out. And then in the evening, uh, the people came unto him in verse 32, and at even, when the sun did set. And then the people brought this. this. And the next verse tells us it was a new day. The next verse 25, huh? and in the morning, Rising up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. I just want to show you the timeline that it was a new day. Uh, the day was super busy. Jesus taught the people in the synagogue. He cast out demons. He healed uh, Simon's uh, mother-in-law. And then at night, a lot of people came and he met all their needs. It was a busy day, but the next day morning, the Bible says that, rise up a great while before day, he went out and departed into a solitary place and there prayed. I just want to pause for a while. Jesus make time to pray. Jesus make time to pray. No, how about us? All the, all the more that we must, we must make time to pray. 
if you just study the life of Jesus as a pattern for us to learn, after a long day, a busy day, in the morning, he find a, a deserted place, a quiet place, just he and God, the Father alone, he prayed. Verse 36. And Simon and they that were with him followed after him. This follow after him is they are, they are, they are looking for him. They are searching for Jesus because they couldn't find him. The next verse is, is very telling, you know. And when they had found him, when they found Jesus, they said unto him, him they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Again, the next morning, a lot of people coming. A lot of needs all over. They want to come and see Jesus for healing, you know, to, to resolve their problem. Guess what did the Lord say? Did Jesus stay there to meet their needs? The next verse gives us the answer. Verse 37, it says, And when they had found him, they said unto him, All men seek for thee. Verse 38, the response from Jesus. And he said unto them, Let us go into the next towns, that I may preach there also. For therefore came I forth. I, I want to stop the, the sermon here. I just want to show you that the priorities in the mind of the Lord Jesus Christ. Of course, he can solve all the problems, but that wasn't his priority. He said what? He said, let us go into the next towns that I may preach there also, for therefore came I forth. His mission, his focus is to preach the gospel, is to reach the lost. So today we, we, we sort of look at three, three very important persons uh, in the book of Mark. Of course, Mark itself. Mark in verse 1, chapter 1, tells us, pay attention. Pay attention to the Son of God. Pay attention to the beginning of the gospel. I know it says, the beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. He wants us to pay attention. I'm using him to help us to, to challenge ourselves that, you know, what are the things that are distracting us from paying attention to follow after Jesus Christ. You, know, you have to identify them so that you can pay attention. The second person that we talk about is John the Baptist. In fact, John is such a great man. You, know, you can find books that's written about John the Baptist. But if you have to pay attention and ask what is the mission of John the Baptist, Again, it is to point the people to the Lord Jesus Christ. The entire life of John the Baptist is to point people to Jesus Christ. How important is this message for all of us? You know, we should be spending time to learn more about the Lord Jesus Christ. We should be doing that. So the focus of Mark is on Jesus. The focus on John the Baptist is upon Jesus. And when we look at Jesus, uh, I highlighted three things, or in fact four things. As a, as a pattern for us to, to consider, uh, as a followers, as a churchgoer, uh, as someone have been Christian for a long time, do you know what is the Lord Jesus focus? Number one, preach the gospel. Number two, make disciples. And when I say make disciples, I'm also challenging every one of us. Are we willing do we have the love and desire to be the disciples of the Lord Jesus Christ? If you look at verse 17, why, why he make them, why he make them disciples? Verse 17 says, And Jesus said unto them, Come ye after me, and I will make you to become fishers of men. Jesus make disciples so that they can draw more men. They can catch more men. Fishers of men. And, and when we are training to be disciples, what should be our end goal? It's not to be very clever. It's not even to be standing here. No, this is not be the end goal. Or the end goal should be you know, to be able to share the words. Because that's the first thing that he did. He wants to train us to be a disciples so that we can be fishes of men. Every one of us should be thinking about the gospel, reaching out, sharing. And then the third thing we talk about is uh, after he, he catch them, right? 
he made disciples, didn't stop there. He teach them. He taught them. It's such a blessing, you know, to, to read the Word of God. And, and sometimes when you see uh, some truth, some new insight uh, from the Bible, uh, I do not know how to express this, uh, the, the joy when you read the Bible and you hear almost you know, the, the Lord is, is, is speaking, uh, the, the joy. And I remember one of the prayer meetings, you know, one of the teachers during prayer meeting, he said that, you know, we spend so much time on all the social media. Why don't you read First King and Second King? First Chronicle and Second Chronicle. It's so eventful. You know, it's so interesting. Why don't you read the book? We should all spend time to read the Bible oh, because this word is full of power and authority. Right? So he preached, he made disciples, he taught them. Oh, that should be the focus of a church. That should be a focus of every one of us. Every one of us. And, and lastly, there's one point, the side point that I talk about is uh, verse 35. Jesus make time to pray. You know, this verse really stand out in the entire chapter. Oh, how do you miss it in his life? Such a busy life. The next morning, people are already waiting for him to minister to their needs. But he, he finds times to pray. Oh, so I challenge every one of us. Uh, the ministry of prayer is important. Yeah, we should be we should be spending time to pray. When I say that, I'm challenging myself uh, because I know my prayer life is also not, you know, not, not very solid. <laughs> you know, so we all, we all need to be challenged. We all need to be thinking about uh, the, the Lord Jesus Christ. And so I end my sermon uh, challenging every one of us to consider spending more time learning about the gospel, learning about the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, that should be our focus and not to be distracted, not to be distracted by the world. In fact, the world is constantly trying to draw us away, off track, focus on wrong thing. You know the Bible got a word for that? If you have an arrow, you know where is the target, right? The push size, you shoot towards that. But we always aim off, you know. There's a word for that, huh? we miss the mark. We miss the mark because we are being distracted. And I hope we know what to focus, realign our priority, realign our priority, align it to what the Lord Jesus Christ wants us to do. Right? Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we give thanks once again for the precious word. We give thanks for the book of Mark, how he, will, how he recorded things in such a fashion, Lord, such a simple graphic uh, action uh, fashion for us to uh, learn and to appreciate. Lord, we pray that uh, your uh, words will continue to be uh, the focus of our life and uh, may uh, this uh, morning uh, sermon, Lord, help us to think more about you, help us to think more about our walk with thee, help us to think more about, Lord, our desire to learn more about thee. Once again, we are thankful, Lord, for uh, this uh, gathering. Uh, we commit the rest of the time back unto your hands. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen.